Hey, what is up guys? Welcome back to the mobile game tutorial. So, last episode we got this whole level uh, figured out. This is a really simple level, but we covered some mechanics. So, we, they know about physics, they know about how the ball is affected by what it pretty much just rolls on. So, if there's a slope, uh, they know they're going to get some speed. And they also know how to move by then. And how to win. And um, before we actually close this level, I'd like to do some more texture on it. So, sorry about my phone keeps ringing for no reason. Um, but yeah, sorry about that. We have to create some unique texture for these border at least. That, that would be a start and, I'll, and uh, also for the wind box. So that's what we'll be doing. I want to create something, some like really simple, really simple tile for these borders. So I open up Photoshop here and I'll go ahead and just create a new, um, let's make this 512. And let's call this tile block or how did we call the other one I think it was tile underscore green and yeah, we could be calling this tile block like so now the main purpose of this is not really to have something that looks great it's it's pretty much just to have something that looks different that doesn't look as um, as a floor basically so we are going to change the color quite a bit I'm going to delete my background layer so I create a new layer delete the background layer I usually do that and um, let's go ahead and just put another color in there. I was thinking about something like grayish for that border, maybe this. And I'm uh, just gonna be creative. So grayish with white. And uh, yeah, let's start off like that. So basically what I did is um, I took the grayish color, put it in the back, created a new layer, then took a really strong white, put it in front, and then I do a control T or free transform, pull this inward, holding shift and holding alt, and then I'm not sure if you can see it well on the video, but there's actually a difference in between these two colors, and I will release that, hit apply. Okay, so the next thing I will go ahead and do is just, um, I was thinking about just making some lines that link them in between them, so maybe just take a pen and have a darker gray color so I'm going to take this color we had up here and make it a little bit more dark then draw these kind of lines so so we get this kind of effect for some reason I'm not sure how we call this but let's make a layer in between these two and maybe bump up our brush to say 5 pixels then I will start oh I took the wrong color let me just go pick that color once more, like that. I will start up here, click once, then hold the shift, and then click right about there. Do the same thing for all of these. Like that. And then I will add a stroke around the first layer. The color of the stroke is going to be the exact same, so I'll just make sure I take the, the color picker tool and then select that once more. Bump it up in size so it looks similar. And here we go. Maybe add some texture inside of it, if you have nice texture. In my case, I don't really have any nice uh, pattern in Photoshop, so I'll just put really anything and then just decrease the opacity by quite a lot. When it's not good looking, what I usually do is just decrease the opacity by quite a lot. Okay, we could be adding some inner shadow in there. Um, I'm not sure. We just just be creative with that, really. Okay, so I'll be done with that, and uh, we might want to be adding some kind of variation up there. So maybe again something really really light. So I'm going to take a white color. Uh, make a new layer, that would be really important. Make a new layer and just draw something of the sort, just some line that we can then use the uh, smudge tool with. Like that, then take the smudge tool. Make sure you don't put any on the sides because this is a seamless texture and you're not allowed to um, to make any non-regular pattern. So maybe something like that, and we just keep on bringing it down like so. 
and at the end what we do is we simply re uh, reduce the opacity to something very very low and sometimes I do this technique uh, they're not always great looking sometimes I go back and I just erase everything but uh, sometimes it's worth it you just gotta be finding what is your own style and that's something I like to do quite a lot so I'll just be doing it in front of you and if it inspires you then good thing right now I'm doing this with my mouse but obviously it would be way better to have a uh, graphic tablet and uh, that's true for every artist jobs that we have to do else you could be finding texture on the web as well or buying some of the asset store but we wanted to make a uh, series that involves us making everything so here it is even though it's not great heart we're doing it okay so once I'm done with that, I will go ahead and just reduce the opacity by quite a lot, and it's really, really subtle. Good. Here we go. Let's uh, that's my texture right there. Let's actually save it. So I'll go ahead and, ju and just uh, save this as. Then find my folder. Uh, uh, where is it at? It's right here. So I will save the PSD somewhere. And then I'll go ahead and just save the uh, PNG inside of my asset folder. So artwork, texture, and then tile block. All right, so back in our game, let's actually make a new material. So I'm going to go under material, right click, and then this was the tile block material. We are going to add the new texture we just made. So where is it at? It's over here. And let's drag and drop this on the prefab so we can actually look. And now I accidentally dropped it on my canvas. Hopefully it didn't break anything. Yeah, you got to be careful about that canvas. It's taking quite a lot of space and it's blocking pretty much all the uh, all your raycasts. So here it is. That's how it looks. We could actually be fixing it a little bit more. Um, it really doesn't seem to be working a hundred percent oh below it's actually good looking but up there I think it has to do with the lighting I'm not sure let's actually try yeah it has to do with the lighting so we we have to um, would have to change the light a little bit in this scene but in any case I will go ahead and just put the material then hit apply everybody now has the border so we get this kind of um, it's kind of pattern going on which is a little bit better than what we used to have now I'm just going to move the directional light around and uh, you know what we could actually make sure that the the object not the object but the material is not affected by light just like our tile floor it is not being affected by light so let's go ahead and make the border not affected by light as well all we have to do to make this happen is select any of, the, of those border and let's put the actual same shader we have on the floor. So on the floor we have Unlit Texture. Now on Tile Block, let's go under Unlit and then Texture. Here we go. And now here is our new level. It's looking a little bit more clean. It's actually looking like a mini golf course, which is not bad. I don't I don't hate the feel. <laughs> and um, so before we conclude this, let's actually make a wind box as well. Now which color could we be making this wind box? We have this kind of ramp that goes up. We could be putting that on say a nice white and uh, on top of it there is a loop that we could be putting on some flashing color maybe like a bright red and then we have some inside loop as well that we could be putting back on a more neutral color. So there's really a lot of things we could be doing and uh, maybe even replace the middle. Now I've no I know that we did the UV for that but it takes really two seconds to redo it so what I will be doing is I will go under my model folder and I will find the winbox double click on it and it should open up in 3ds max so here it is down here I'll go ahead and just um, we have it here let's make a new texture and quickly apply it to um, our object so we don't really have to do that later on let's open up Photoshop again I will do control N to create a new file and uh, the win box, let's make this 
256 by 256 because we don't really need a lot of definition on this one. Uh, at least for the ideas I have in mind, I don't really need any, but if you're planning on making some nice drawing, then you might want to have um, bigger resolution. So this is going to be the wind box. Uh, we could say texture, I don't know, we're just gonna be creative. <laughs> so wind box texture. Um, I will start right away by creating uh, which side could we create? These ones. So all of these. And I was thinking maybe about see how we have four of them by um, quadrant. Then we could be only making one texture and it fits all four. So a simple rectangle will do the job in this case. I'll go ahead and just this is going to be the rectangle around the object and um, what color could we be putting? I said white, we could be putting it on kind of gray again. So I'll just put my background on black so I can see what's going on. Again, take some kind of gray color, free transform this, and this is going to be the strip that is going to be around my wind box. We're actually going to do the UV correctly now. So, um, well, correctly, we're gonna do the UV in a way that we can reuse them. So I'll be leaving it like that. And uh, this is only going to be my background. So this is going to be the background for the rectangle around the, the object. And then I'll copy this layer, size it inward, maybe put a lighter gray in there. Again, it's really subtle. So, sorry if it's um, a bad video quality, but I just change the color of that. And this is going to be pretty much it. So what I was thinking about doing is starting from this pixel, this white pixel here, this is going to be the bottom of that very shape. So maybe we could be adding some kind of grunge, some, some kind of uh, mock by using a brush and then we just brush like that. Uh, maybe with less pixels, so maybe two pixel and we just brush like that. Just do something grungy, it doesn't have to be nice. It has to be um, grungy, pretty much. So just pretty much something of the sort. So it looks like it's actually close to the floor and uh, it really depends on the style of your game. Now that I'm thinking about it, it doesn't really fit my style of game, but I'll be putting it on a really small opacity. So I'll go ahead and just clean this up make sure it stays inside of my bound area that I gave for that and I'll reduce the opacity of that new layer I just made. So maybe something like that and we could be splitting it in small pots or actually leave it like that but I'd like to have a border on the side so maybe over here put a black blackish border on both end so one here and also one around there. Okay, so we you probably have no idea what I'm doing if you're really new to this, but I'm actually going to apply it to the object so you can have a look. So I will say, actually, let's put another one up here as well before that. There we go, good. Let's save that somewhere in the folder. This is going to be the Winbuck texture. It is going right inside of the same folder as the rest. Now I'll go inside of 3ds Max, open up my material by pressing M and then I will go change this texture for the one we just made. So where it is, Winbox texture over here. Okay, so now this is what our object looks like. Obviously this is not going to be viable, so what I'll do is select all of the faces around that, like so, then unwrap uh, do a unwrap UVW and we will make sure to just split them all in a four so once these four are there I click on one control click until I get four and then I do a flapping mapping hopefully they're gonna be all connected and they are not so we're gonna need to find another way what we can do is actually go under um, projection so planner map 
and we can project that on the Z axis like so. So align to Z. Okay. Now I'm going to close this off by clicking on the projection again and then choose the next four. So one, two, three, four. Projection in Z. Then I'll close it off. One, two, three, four. Projection in Z. Close it off. And finally, one, two, three, and four. Okay. Now we should get that kind of result and it's a little bit messy, but what we'll do is choose one face and then activate this um, selection by element UV toggle and then simply take one, just simply a uh, single click somewhere and we're gonna rotate it like so. So you rotate by 90 degrees, you take another one, you rotate it again by 90 degrees so it, they, all, they all fit in the end and they all look like this. So right now they're all assuming the exact same UV. Having this done, now we can go ahead and just expand that and actually work on making our UV look great. So what I was thinking of doing is actually selecting all the one up top or uh, on top of the left side right now. Make sure that you uncheck this select by element UV by the way. And just select all of these vertices. And then I'm going to do a quick transform align horizontal like so, just move him outward and let's do the exact same thing for the bottom one. And that's the result we get. Now I will do a align on a vertical with only these two, align on vertical with only these two here and so on. So we actually end up with a strip like that and we can take the whole thing now and then resize it to our liking. So this is what I'll be doing. I'll be putting it right about there. And then this side, I will bring it down like so. Then move this inward. Okay, now try to make the uh, stripes inside of it, try to make them even else it's going to look a little bit messy. Once you're done, go ahead and collapse your object and this is what you get. This is the kind of result you're going to get, which looks a lot better than it used to. Now as for the top one, um, I was thinking about some kind of red so we can simply be putting a red color somewhere. So if you'd like to do that on your texture, you simply take a paintbrush take the red color and just put it somewhere. So I'll just be putting it up top here. doesn't really matter to me. Then I'll save this, go back inside of that, do a unwrap UVW with only these faces selected. And then I will take all of these UVs. So we got all of these faces selected. Let's do a flattened mapping select all of these, align on both horizontal and vertical. So they're only a single point and then let's move this right in the red, like that. Here we go. So here it is, we might wanna be reducing the this red so it looks more light. But of course you're gonna be playing with uh, the color until you, you find something you like and that's going to be mine then we can actually go ahead and just take a custom shape or an image from Google depending on what you like. Uh, you know what, I'm actually going to use this Fleur de Lis instead. There we go. It's going to represent my region right now, so I'm quite proud of that. Right, and now we're just going to decide which kind of background do we wanna, want to give this. So, what color could we be giving this background, so behind the actual fleur de lis. Uh, maybe just keep it a, a gray, another simple gray like that. I do not hate this. Maybe one, uh, you even want to like put some brush like we did earlier, so take a white color and just spread it around. It is really up to you at that point. 
By the way, I made a new layer so I can actually do that without breaking stuff. Uh, there we go. I'll reduce the opacity. Like so, maybe give the border around this uh, fleur de lis stroke. One pixel stroke, must not abuse. Or maybe two pixel because we uh, it's quite a small texture and we don't want it to fight with the uh, rendering. There we go, so that's my texture. I am going to put this in the background of my wind box. So I'll just go ahead and select the center like we used to do, like this. Do a unwrap UVW on it. And all we really need to do for this one is do a uh, projection on the Z, like so, and then we just scale it however you'd like. So in my case, it is going to be something like that and move it down. There we go. So there it is. Let's uh, actually do the borders as well. I'll be putting it on a grayish color. So I've selected all of my borders. Now I'll go to here. I'll just take all the faces. And um, what we could do is actually quickly make them the same exact thing as uh, the borders here. And you see how I just flattened mapping and they all came out straight like that? Let's actually use that opportunity to just put it here instead. Sometimes they don't come out as uh, as nice stripes like that, so that's why I'm saying that right now. Let's select the vertex modifier. Use the select by element UV. So when we select one, it's actually going to select everything. And then we'll also enable the snapping in that case. So where is the snap? It's actually Control S, so that's kind of that's kind of weird. But once you snap, you just go ahead and just stack them one on top of each other like that, and then go ahead and just hit Control S again to remove that snap, and we can put it right on top of our nice UV we made earlier. There we go. Let's resize it. Or mind, let's do a free transform instead, and that's a free form mode over here. Then we can pretty much just resize however we'd like, like so. And once we're done, as always, we press on collapse to editable polygon or convert, and that's our object now. Looks way better than it used to. I'm going to hit control save, and then all we pretty much need to do is um make a new material for that. So right click material new and this is going to be the win box material this win box material is going to assume the new texture we just made here it is we drag and drop this on top of the win box hit apply and um, let's also change the shader for something unlit like so and since we want this to be facing the player I'm going to rotate the whole object like so and the last thing we might need to do and we'll probably do is just change the color of the particles because they don't really make sense anymore all right so under wind box I'll go into particle system and uh, we can make this red this could actually be great so let's go ahead and just simply make them red that kind of red um, the rest is pretty much complete, so we got a great looking level now. Let's go ahead and uh, move our camera at the beginning of the scene. So, And now all we have to do really is just rearrange our scene around. So if you remember correctly, all we really have to do is just move our scene to a nice angle. So maybe this kind of angle where it's going to see the ball, the beginning and then the ending and also the curve. And then we choose main camera, game object and we do align with view, like so. So whenever our level starts, this is actually what we see for three seconds. And then we go on to playing our game. And might need some uh, kind of distance like that, so let me just move this upward, and there we go. 
Great, so that's uh, that's a good start. Here it is. Again, maybe move it a little bit to the left. And we're pretty much done. So let's take a picture of that. Okay, so one of the last steps of the level design would actually be um, taking a thumbnail. So what we're going to do is actually take the game window and pull it out just like this. Make sure that it is on maximize on play. And we are going to hit play. Now we need to find it a really nice angle. Then we turn off the UI and do all that kind of good stuff. So let's go ahead and just pause the game. Go back in our scene and which angle could we be taking just a simple angle like that just to, an overview of the level basically so maybe this or maybe we also want to highlight what's going on like what are you going to learn so maybe put it something like that I think that's an actual good thumbnail now once that is done you're going to select the main camera do not unpause the game just select the main camera Go under game object, align with view, and we are going to turn off the canvas completely. This is what we get in the other screen if we just make it bigger now. We have enough room for a print screen, so that's what, exactly what I will be doing now. Print screen, and I'm dragging the region I'd like. So uh, I am going to save this to clipboard, and then let's move over to Photoshop. Now, if I remember correctly, our thumbnails, they were, um, let's actually go check so I don't mess up. Our thumbnails, they are, under resources, levels, and 1280 by 720. Let's go ahead and create a new folder, so 1280 by 720. This is going to be the um, one underscore training and then I'm going to hit copy because I had it in my clipboard move it however I'd like so this uh, works for me you could also add some color correction if you'd like like auto tone or auto contrast auto contrast is going to do the job for me and uh, if you'd like to add some kind of pattern repeating pattern like a, your logo up here you could actually do that in my case, I don't feel that's actually useful. Or maybe we could actually put the name somewhere. That might be uh, might be good. So maybe training in text, and then we just pull it, make it look big, like so. And we might actually be able to create a border as well. So if you'd like, we could actually go ahead and just make a new uh, rounded rectangle. That always does the job, and maybe make it um, light greenish or pretty much any color just make it assume the whole size of the thumbnail almost the whole size and then I will right click on that rasterize here's my rectangle and then I'll choose everything inside of it by hitting one so W select inverse then paste, select inverse again, and remove, so delete. So now we have some kind of thumbnail going on. And as far as as the text, we can, um, we could add some strong fonts in there, so strong fonts with a good stroke, maybe five. It really depends, you just gotta play with what you like the most. In my case, let me just use my uh, my font I like quite a lot, it is called Railway. Or maybe not, let's use another one. Okay, we'll stick with Impact, that was a good font. So, Impact. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much it for the thumbnail. Now the thumbnail, uh, we could be saving, actually we we should be saving this somewhere. We should be saving this PSD file because we're going to be making more than one novel. And we'd like all of them to have the same kind of feel, have this same kind of, um, how do you say, brand. So we know it's an actual level. 
and uh, say it's like a bonus level then you could be putting a different border around it or just changing like little elements of it okay so I will be doing save as and I'm going to save this PSD file under somewhere that is not inside of my asset folder this is going to be the thumbnail base or level thumbnail base if you prefer then I'll do save as PNG and it will actually go replace it under assets resources level and one underscore training we save this and we should actually have the changes already applied inside of our game there we go that's our first level right there then we boot it looks something of the sort and we actually need to set the gold, silver, and bronze time. So we'll do that fairly quickly. So what could be a gold time? Let's actually go and try to complete this as fast as we can. So gold time would be under, say, 1.75. Now as for silver time... Let's put it above 2 and we just play around with this so pretty much I'll go ahead and just open up my one underscore training go under level manager and then um, gold time is going to be 1.75 silver time is going to be 2 and everything above that is going to be bronze time okay well guys that's um that's pretty much it for this episode. I hope you guys enjoy. I hope you guys like this video. If you did, please leave me a like. I really appreciate that. And if you have any question or comment or you'd like to share a screenshot of your level, you can always use the Facebook page for that. It's there for that uh, sole purpose. And uh, yeah, so thanks all for watching. Subscribe for more and I will see you in the next episode.